to let my audience know that Mary Beth Brueggemann, she's the president of the Mission of the Marine Corps Veterans, and this national organization has great power and great influence, and she'll tell us a little bit more about it. And Clay Stackhouse is a U.S. Marine Corps veteran and a finance expert with the Navy Federal Credit Union. And once again, I'm going to get started with you, Mary Beth. Uh, tell me about uh, cities in 2022, top, well, this is for Clay. Which uh, cities top 2022, and how were they chosen? Right, so uh, we did something a little different this year. I've been, uh, I've been honored to be uh, the spokesman for this uh, since 2018. Uh, what we did the same was we partnered with another uh, nonprofit, uh, Mary Beth and her The Mission Continues, and we used Sperling's Best Places to consider uh, over 400 cities. We talked to over 1,000 veterans and their families. Uh, you know, every every year over 250,000 veterans transition out. Uh, that's an individual transition for each one. So what we did differently this year uh, is we divided our list up into, into four categories. So we have an overall list, best cities. We have best cities for families with children. We have best cities for retired veterans and best cities to buy a house. So uh, our overall number one was Charleston, South Carolina. Our overall, I mean, our military families with children uh, was Fort Worth, Texas. Best for retired veterans was Tampa. And the best to buy a house was Altoona, Pennsylvania. Oh, I love that Fort Worth's on that list. Clay, tell yeah. me uh, how often you release an update of this list. Right. I think it's important that we continually reevaluate this list because, uh, you know, when I transitioned in 2015, uh, the mortgage rates were 2.5%. So if you were to transition then, you would have had different uh, thoughts and concerns than now. That's the same with breaking the list down, Valder. I mean, that's a lot of individual people transitioning. So uh, if you're transitioning with children, you want to know about education. If you're a, a veteran who's going to live on a retirement income, you're going to want to know about taxes. And if you're buying a house for the first time, you're going to want to know about VA loan rates and, uh, you know, uh, real estate rates, property taxes, things like that. So we want this list to be valuable to each person. And we just want a different reason for each one to come look and say, hey, there's something here for me too. We want it to be valuable to each one of those 250,000 people. I'd like to ask Mary Beth, how can this list help inform others? You know, Clay, you talked a little bit about how transitions are so unique for service members, and um, that's the value of releasing this list frequently. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so it stays updated to the times and can be responsive to what individual veterans need. At the same time, we also know there are some common and connective threads that um, really cut across most service members transitions. Um, and those are sense of purpose, the lack of sense of purpose that veterans feel when they leave the military, and a lack of connection, um, lack of connection to each other. So you immediately get disconnected from your unit or your tribe. Um, and you are often uprooted from your geographic community as well and are looking for a new place to settle and raise your family. So the mission continues exists to solve for both of those things. And we're, <clears throat> we're a national organization that connects veterans with opportunities to continue their service, this time in under-resourced communities. And we do that through what we call service platoons, which are teams of um, veteran-led, teams of veteran and non-veteran um, community members who team up together to tackle really difficult challenges in communities across the country, helping them, therefore, to restore their sense of purpose by continuing their service, and also to connect with other veterans and form that community with them, and to connect more deeply with their geographic community. So we look to partnerships like this one with Navy Federal and lists like this best cities list to determine where are we already active? Where are we already providing that protective factor for veterans through our service platoons? And where are there opportunities for us to grow and consider where, um, where veterans are choosing to settle and, and raise their families and, and making sure that they have access to a service platoon when they do? I'm glad you guys are talking about this. Mary Beth, you know, uh, living in a community and feeling safe and protected is good, but you need volunteers in those communities. Is that something you talk to the veterans about? 
Oh, absolutely. And we hardly have to, you know, it really is in their DNA to want to give back. And what we need to do, um, what we what we are charged with that the mission continues is creating opportunities for them to plug in. They already know they want to continue to serve. Um, they just need chances. They just need places where they can be directed to take the skills and experience they gained in the military and point it in the direction of the greatest impact back home in communities. Um, so we talk about it a lot. It, it provides from volunteerism, you, you have this restored sense of purpose, you have this restored sense of connectedness, and those are significantly um, protective factors against so many other challenges that veterans will face during their transitions. Um, and so it's, it's an absolutely critical part of ensuring that these, that these folks have successful transitions and um, are, are, have this whole, whole well-being um, as they move forward to raise their families. Before I let you go, you have a place for people that are interested to go and find more information. Yes, we have plenty of more. Look at all the list at the NavyFederal.org best cities and the mission 